let's get started. So Lefteris is going to drive on the machine and I'm going to talk about what's happening, okay? This is a hands-on session, so we want you to follow this stuff. And if any problems arise, please raise your hand and Abulahim or me will come up and try to work with you around the problem, okay? So please don't be shy and ask, ask questions. We're here to learn, we're here to get started with others. There's no point in just not asking, okay? So first thing, a little bit of outline. We're gonna import a Ubuntu VM, which you downloaded into VirtualBox. We're gonna download and install ONOS with prerequisites, environment variables, and then we run it. Then we install Mininit in order to create a custom topology. How many of you are familiar with Mininit? Oh, good. So basically it creates custom topologies for you, okay? We install Mininit, then we, we show the Onos ecosystem, so basic CLI and interface commands, like rapid user interface and REST. Okay, let's get started. So, um, the first thing we will do is to open up VirtualBox. They have a specific way of opening, of opening it, and this is a Windows machine, but depending on your, on your uh, operating system, this, the way to open VirtualBox obviously differs. And we will import the VM that we have downloaded previously. It's very easy to do it. You go File, Import Appliance, and you browse to find the actual file uh, where you have downloaded it. This is the uh, place where I've downloaded the OVA file. So I select it. Uh, if I go fast and uh, you don't follow, please raise your hand so that I go slower. And also Andreas does the same, so that we are all on the same page. So I select the OBA file and I press open. And here, the, these are the um, configuration that has already been made by you, for you about the VM. And we press import. If you can, and your machine enables you to do so, we have, we have done a two, two core, two gig machine, but if you can, expand it to like four core, four gig, four core, eight gig. So you'll run faster simply, okay? And especially later we will, we will want to run multiple instances of ONOS. Two gigabytes of RAM are not enough, so there you will not be able to follow this part of the, of the tutorial. So after the import, I will also expand the RAM of the VM so that it's feasible for it to run multiple instances. Yeah. And just to make this clear, while the VM is importing, this is a plain Ubuntu VM with some just little bit of stuff installed. There is, you can get this from the, the Ubuntu repository, okay? We just packaged it in an OVA file for your convenience to easily import it in VirtualBox, okay? This is plain old Ubuntu 16, as simple as that, okay? We didn't do any magic. So as the presentation shows, and I showed you also live, you select the VM and you press start. But as we said before with Andrea, we go to settings first, you go to system, uh, and we change the value of the memory by simply clicking. As you see, if I click, I can go, I can take the uh, cursor to the right. And I can give, for example, I have 16 gigs of RAM in this machine. I can give, uh, I'm a little bit. Let's run with eight. Uh, yeah, 288. I'm a little bit, you know, always voice OCD, I think is the expression on that. I need uh, specifically 12 gigs to give. And I just press OK. and I have 12 gigs of RAM in the, in the VM now. Is everybody following? Is everybody okay up to now? Any questions? Raise your hand. Everything good? Okay, awesome. Now we can continue. So we then press start to boot up the VM.
there will be times where it's going to be awkward silence from our part because we have to wait for something to finish, a process to end, stuff like that. And we'll try to entertain you the best way we can during that time. So the password uh, for this VM is ONOS, as you, everybody knows. Very simple. ONOS. Simple as that. And now, and now this is, as you well know, Ubuntu. This is the Ubuntu we start with. Okay? Is everybody good up to this point? So if you need any help as well, you can ask me, I can go through one. Yes, just raise your question and then you can join you. So uh, from this part onwards, I think the um, uh, presentation is redundant because most of the work that we'll do is going to be on the uh, Linux CLI. Uh, so I will uh, minimize this document this, uh, and I will actually open up the commands that we're going to use because I don't want you guys to look at me fumble through the commands and laugh at me. I will copy paste them to be safe, on the safe side. And some of them are actually pretty long and pretty difficult to, but to type. All these commands you find in the Google Slides that we shared before. So the initial presentation, we shared three set of slides. In the second set of slides, you'll see all the commands and the steps that we are running here. Okay? So please refer to that set of slides if you need any command. If you have any problem, raise your hand and we can join you and give you help in doing what, whatever you're stuck at. In other words, the VM supports uh, copy-paste uh, from uh, your host uh, environment. So we suggest for this session to do copy-paste and avoid typing because typing it also includes typos most of the times, and you can avoid that. Making it a little bit bigger. I guess you can, right? Okay. Very good. Okay. Let's proceed onwards. Uh, so the first thing that we do, uh, we install, download and install Mininet. And this is the git command that uh, goes to the Mininet repository and downloads Mininet. And let's see how the Wi-Fi will respond. That's pretty fast. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so what we did here, in fact, you don't have the same Wi-Fi for that. <laughs> That's why. So what we did here is just a loading plain Mininet from GitHub repository, which is also provided by ONF. ONF is kind of the mother association also for the Mininet project, which is good in my opinion. So, everybody good? Maybe there was a Okay, we wait. Okay, we can wait for a second. Or more. How much we need? So, we did the first command. Okay? Any problems? Is everybody downloading uh, the source code of Mininet? Everything good? Downloading the source code of Mininet? Perfect. Let's go onwards. Okay. I think because some people are downloading now the VM, and for that reason, maybe you will, you will find some difficulties, some problems with Wi-Fi. Okay, so a good thing about this is since you have the slides with all the commands, you can also download the VM now, later, at home, whenever you want, on the bus, on the plane, like I don't know, on the beach, and then do these instructions, and this will become the same thing we're doing here. So these instructions work at any time. It's not just because we're presenting them on stage that it works, okay? So if you're downloading the VM now, you can do these steps later, and we're doing them very slowly, so you have time to catch up. Yeah, and that's why we have one hour, which is, uh unprecedented uh, in previous uh, honors builds or uh, in previous uh, I mean, uh, uh, tutorials of this kind. We want for everyone to be able to understand what we're doing and uh, be able to follow it on his own. So now, after the download of the Mininet, we enter the Mininet folder. Enter the Mininet folder. Uh, one optional command that you can use in order to see what's the latest uh, Mininet uh, 
statement release is to use git tag. As I said again, it's optional, but it gives you all the releases that exist in the, in the mainnet folder uh, up to now. So we see that the latest stable release is 2.2.2, because all the others are release candidates and the other uh, um, releases. So then what we do, we check out Git with this release. And then we install Mininet. So how to install Mininet, you have your in the home Mininet folder, you do the checkout of the release, and then you run dot slash util slash install.sh, and we will run it with a very specific dash set of commands. What that means, mat dash f and v, means that we are installing an open flow because we need it to like expose our switches to honors. We are installing the core depend uh, core files and dependencies of Minnet, and we're also installing OVS switches because we're gonna emulate open flow devices to OVS. So now we run this command. FND. This is why I was. You now you understand why I'm saying that. I had less than two hours of sleep for the last two days in the plane, so yeah, I guess you can understand why I'm trying to copy paste. It's a long trip from Greece, 24 hours, in case you were wondering. So now it's downloading and uh, actually installing the Mininet uh, software with the options and the parameters that we specified. It's also downloading some stuff. Yeah. So one, one thing, uh, if you're downloading the VM now, maybe it's not the right time because like downloading three gigs of uh, VM is probably gonna clog up the network and like everybody else cannot work on it. So, if you're downloading the VM now, instead of downloading it, please ask Abdullah him, he has a hard drive, he can give it to me. Okay? Please do so. And please also welcome Google. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we're waiting for Mina to be installed. <laughs> I wish I could participate in this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you see, we're downloading everything we need with a git clone of the code, and now we're downloading the additional things that were needed for our environment. And now, now we have a make file that does all this stuff for us. If uh, someone uh, is following the tutorial, and during this step, uh, he receives a message saying that uh, this file is locked, something similar to that, uh, is that process is locked by another process. This is the type of message that you might see. Uh, you just shut down the VM and reboot it because it's just a previous state process that is uh, locking the apt uh, software. So it's, you just shut down the VM, start it again and the problem will be solved and you'll be able to, to follow us. Uh, the slides, yes, I can do so. Let's here. So the first link are the slides that contain all commands that we will run today. So just get them there. And since Minute is downloading and installing, we're gonna get we're gonna use this time to show you this slide, which is important for you. And as I mentioned. This, you can do it at home. So if it doesn't work now, try it again. And if you try it again and it doesn't work again, send us a message. Or like you're stuck at some point, send us a message. And we will do our best to help you finish it and learn about it. Let's see how. Uh, these steps are uh, network uh, intensive when 
it comes to downloading and uh, um, the size of the downloads is quite big, big especially for the, for the VM. And, uh, but we wanted to show you how it works because most of the times what happens is everything is pre-installed and uh, you start from there and you don't learn how to do the basic stuff. And you should also consider that we've already installed Java, we've already installed uh, other software like curl, for example, that is needed. Uh, because it would take a lot more time if we did that too, and we wouldn't have enough time to show anything else. So yeah, we try to start from scratch for, for people that don't have any experience working on installing on us, in order to help you see how easy it is to use it, actually. Yes, doing that, in fact, for at least one time, it's, uh, it's essential. Later, if you want, you can even uh, use Onos inside the Docker. We have official Docker image on the Docker Hub. You can, uh, if you have Docker engine, you can download that in one command line. You have Onos running, and uh, you can continue your tests and your learning. Okay. But doing the installation for at least one time, it's uh, in our opinion mandatory for you. So you can actually learn and really feel what what is the internal elements of the Onos code base. And uh, if uh, any of you wants to see this at a later time, we're actually streaming it live on YouTube. So you will go back to our YouTube channel and you will find this video. So you can also follow the steps after on YouTube. So we did all these. We have finished installing Mininet. Uh, the VM actually has finished installing Mininet. If you are following, if you also have your VM finished, so uh, can, maybe we can, can continue. Can, you, can I ask if someone uh, at least has succeeded to, to follow us? Nobody? So, no. okay, at least we have someone. There. This, guy will get, <laughs> this guy will get a gold medal afterwards oh. under, you know, my uh, suggestion. We must find this guy. So, do you want that we wait for some seconds or some minutes until that you succeed uh, making these uh, steps? Who is running the downloading actually? Okay, so we can wait for some minutes. Yeah, we'll wait, we'll wait. Give, give us some sign, please, once it's done. So, while, while waiting uh, that you finish these steps, we can even take uh, any question related to what we presented today, if you want, just, just to, to make it a little bit uh, interactive. So if you have any question, uh, please, it's a time to ask because we are waiting uh, the downloading process that de depends on the, on the network capacity and the number of downloaders, etc. So if you have any question on mind, uh, even about the community, you have the community director is with us, David Bauzo, uh, how to get involved uh, either in our teaching brigade or in the other brigades, you can just uh, ask your question and we'll try to and if you have any problems, please raise your hand and we'll come to you. Yeah, welcome. I just download uh, the image for this. I don't know the password. Almost. Oh, almost. Uh, yes. Can you type the password for the... Uh, I the think VM. I did. Didn't I? Uh, the password for the VM. VM. Yeah, I, I did, I did uh, type it, but I didn't show it here because I was showing the actual VM. Putting the Ubuntu VM number eight. Uh, yeah. No. Um, oh. Yeah. No. Uh, I think I forgot. Probably yeah. The oh. password for the VM is Onos. Small letter. Onos. O N O S. O N O S. Small letters. I think I did somewhere. No problem. Onos. Let's let's shut it. Slides in the previous, in the other slides, but not with this one. It's small, small, small letters. As simple as that.
Is it okay? Are you done? It's in progress. Okay, great. But it works. Is it network or not? Okay, great. How? It depends on the number of downloads. Yeah. So I will wait for some minutes, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want them? We show some demos. These videos of, uh, of tomorrow. The other videos. One waiting. How are we at with the installation? Pretty good? No loading stuff? Okay. Then we can go a little bit further. Then we wait on the next step also. Yeah, because we're going to download uh, bonus now. And it takes also time. Uh, are you about to finish or it's, it's very slow the process? Should we wait? No. It's what? Okay, we can go. Yeah. I think we will we will go on, and later you will uh, see the recording video, and uh, you have the slides, and we will try. You and if you have any trouble, uh, any problem, please write us email or write to the owners discuss mailing uh, list, and we will reply. Okay. Or you can keep uh, actually doing the process, uh, following the process, and you will also use maybe the time of the session of the break in order to be able to install Onos and follow the next tutorial, which is going to be about uh, creating an application. Yeah. So the next step is actually installing Onos. So we pull it up the VM, put it into VirtualBox, boot it up, install Minimet, and now we install Onos. So, so it's basically the same process. Minimet is on GitHub, Onos is on GitHub. So, what the Teres is showing now is basically CDing into the home directory. We suggest the home directory because it's easier, it doesn't avoid long paths with problems. And so here we are in the home directory and we clone ONOS. Let's get clone HBS GitHub ONOS.git. So this is plain old cloning from GitHub. And uh, yeah. It's going to create a Nonos folder and it's now downloading the Nonos repository. Can we go to yeah, yeah. the presentation? That has to be a dance between. Uh, so you see the command there. It's also copy pasted from this, the, set, the set of slides. And this is just cloning the Nonos core sub source tree. With this, you get everything we talked about before. So you get the core, you get the southbound, and then you get some applications, you get the drivers, you get the graphic user interface. All the honest code is in there. And it's free, Apache. Okay? So I just remember that we are preparing a development environment because we want later to develop an application. So if you want to really just to run owners to make some tests, to see how to interact with the uh, built-in application, you can use Docker if you want. You don't need to install anything. You have your Linux machine, uh, you have a Docker engine. In one command line, you, uh, you can get uh, an Onus uh, instance and work with. And in a couple of lines, three or four lines, uh, described in the wiki, you can even run a cluster of Onus and deal with a distributed environment. But all what we are doing now is just for a development environment in order to be able later to write code in Java, combine with an application, install that application into Onus uh, core system and activate the application and work with. Okay? Just to make this point very clear from, the, from now. So our machine finished downloading Onus. 
pretty good. And uh, we can wait for a couple of seconds for you to download it also. Let me, in the meantime, explain what's going to happen next, because the next steps are not going to be download something. The next steps are actually going to change some things in your VM. So here, we're, back, we're basically exporting our, the bash profile of Onos with some shortcuts, with some aliases, with some stuff that Onos needs in the host VM to run. And we're going to source it in order you, for you to have it every time you open a new window. So this basically is the end of the setup to run Onos. Because at that point, you're going to have like some special commands that Onos provides. Like a, the simplest one is if you type O, it's going to bring you to the Onos home folder. And then it's going to, like for example, export some Onos applications that we're going to run with. So it gives you some basics tool for running and using autos. And it won't work if you, won't do, if you don't do that. If you don't export the, the bash profile this way, this is one way of doing it. There are multiple ways you can do it. This is probably the simplest one. Since we append to the bash rc file uh, the dot uh, space tilde slash almost blah blah, uh, this whole path. If you don't do that, it won't work. So it's, it's I mean, uh, important to remember that you have to configure the environment variables. Okay, I think we can do that now. Yeah. We have so, uh, given this a quite big introduction about it. So let's do it. So, simple, copy a couple of commands. And we will share also the files with the commands, so you can also get them yeah. from there, instead of just going through slides. Uh, yeah. Now I'm sourcing the bus RC, bus RC file, and since I'm not slept, I have to copy it. Uh, what I'm doing is, since I made this change, to the bus RC file, I have to source it in order for the environment, the Linux environment, to consider the changes that I've done to the bus RC file with the previous command. If I don't source it, even though the bus profile will be modified, the operating system will not uh, take that into consideration unless I source it. So every new terminal will go back to the old thing. So with this thing, we, we have a new source of the bash profile. We get it every time the new terminal window gets open. We reboot the system, everything, basically. OK? So we more or less good. Do we follow up until here? Download on us, source the bash profile. No? You have a problem? It's just waiting on the network? OK. We'll stay and wait for this. The next slide is about uh, actually running on us. Now we're ready to run on us. So let me go in some detail here. So we will run a command later, but I want to, to explain some of this stuff. So, well, the first one is just going into the onus directory. But then you see buck run onus local dash dash clean space debug. So that is the command that builds and runs a local onus instance. One onus instance. We're not running a, third, a three onus instance cluster because that's heavy on your machine and we want you to be able to use your machine, okay? So as a build tool, Onus uses Buck. Buck is a build tool from Facebook and it was before we were using Maven, but it's such a huge repository and such a lot of packages and applications and components and elements that it was not cutting it. We, it was taking too long to build Onus. A complete Onus build via Maven now takes around 20 minutes. That's not doable. That's not usable. So what we did was actually change from Maven to, to Buck. 
This block basically parallelizes as much as it can, building uh, the packages and creating every uh, element that is needed for ONOS. And uh, it basically does what Maven was doing before, just in parallel. Okay? Run ONOS local, mean ONOS on your local machine. The ONOS IP address will be 127.0.0.1. Okay? And then we attach two options. These two options are for Caraf, which is the underlying uh, element that we use to run ONOS. So the clean is purge every state that was there before. If it was, if it was, if there was, so it's just to start clean. No devices, no links, no hosts, no replication, nothing. Just clean start. Debug enables you, if you want, to attach a debugger to the ONOS code. So if any of you is familiar with IntelliJ, you just create a debug configuration on port 505, at that, and then when ONOS is running, you can attach it and put breakpoints into IntelliJ and you can follow the code and how it proceeds. So this helps you develop. There's a bug, make it put a breakpoint and learn how it's going, okay? I think since this will take some time, we can start doing it. Yeah. <coughs> so we go into the honors folder. And we run, and then we run the command I talked about just now. First thing, since it's the first time we're running this, ONOS will automatically download the build tool, which is buck, which is 44 megs. It's, it's going to take some time, hopefully not 20 minutes. <laughs> 